Today is the 3rd of March 2022 and I have wrote a little article on our blog uh, about uh, the planning permission. Now it gets a little bit stupid as it always does when it involves government bodies and interference etc. So um, if you're on our, let me just tip you that way. Here's our blog post here. So it gives you the ideal sizes here because what we're looking at is garden solar. So um, we're looking in particular these uh, like pagoda type buildings or out buildings that you might want to have installed uh, on your solar. This will reduce your costs down because you're not hiring scaffolding to put them up on your roof. Now the problem with the law is that they didn't envision. <laughs> Uh, right, hang on, so micro inverters, uh, there's hardly any law about those because they're classed as new and emerging technologies and that's in the latest update which was on the 1st of this month. Um, obviously they've been around for over 12 years so it gives you an idea of how backwards um, our system is over here. So let me just quickly flip through this just to explain a little bit to you. So if you get down onto, I think it's page three, we go into the rules and regulations. Now this relies on planning permission and permitted development, which is schedule two, part 14. Uh, there's a link right at the top of the page there, so you can actually read this blithering load of nonsense. So. If you have an out building, uh, typically they, they fall under class E. Um, but then they said, no, you can't do that. Uh, well, actually, it doesn't say that. Uh, class, under class 14, uh, sorry, part 14B, it says the surface area uh, can't be over 9 square metres or exceeding 3 metres. And that's a standalone solar system. So if you've got a, a frame or something with just solar on it, um, you can't build over 9 square metres or exceed 3 metres in any direction. Now, for most of you, this is going to be a bit of an issue because two solar panels are 3.3 metres, so immediately it's just ruled out using um, domestic and commercial grade um, solar panels which you would normally use. However, that's for a standalone, um, but it doesn't include fitting onto roofs of buildings. So class E obviously is the um, eight buildings, but apparently it doesn't fall under that, it falls under class A. So class A would be your normal house building. So it, it says on here, it goes, PV insulation is no more than two, 20 centimetres above the roof, uh, highest part of the building, land, uh, whether you're on listed in conservation areas, uh, and that's all it says here. So there's the conditions. As far as practical, uh, minimise the effect um, on the appearance of the building and the local area and to remove it whenever as soon as possible. So it's like a pergola is not standalone solar. In fact, their definition was standalone solar means PV or thermal equipment which is not installed on a building, which is therefore class E. So it falls under class A. Yes, that's really clear, isn't it, and helpful, which is rather typical of any law that they make. It's because it's hashed together um, with loads of busybodies from different departments and having their different says. And there's no continuity between them because they all have separate agendas. So ideally what you want to do is have a, a pagoda fitted to your building, um, which then vacates the five meter rule and the um, size rule um, and that way you can have a decent solar system otherwise you'll end up with having to have um, you know the really small um, rubbish stuff that will probably uh, be no good anyway so what you want to do is you want to be able to use it so either you put it up on your roof or you're having an out building a pagoda or some sort of building um, and structure which is substantial i'm not saying go out and put it on your garden shed because your garden shed is more than likely going to collapse they only have a snow load of about 170 kilograms and the problem with those is that obviously 
um, a solar panel array is probably about 160, gra uh, 160 kilograms and therefore it's more likely as soon as the snow hits the whole shed's coming down and I've had to put them into people's houses and they are absolute rubbish. Um, so we've looked at a couple and there is a link here for a B&Q one which is made of timber. Uh, it may need strengthening works for the lateral bars on there and uh, is subject to inspection really. Um, the problem you get with solar is that you've obviously got your big panels. Uh, when you get snow on it, that's that's that down. If you've got an open roof or a gap between your roof and your solar panel, once the wind comes in there, it wants to lift the panel up. So you have to have tie down specifications as well. Now our designs are a little bit more expensive. Actually, they come in at probably about half the price of what uh, I've seen um, any reasonable um, pergola type installation. Um, because we use uh, structural graded uh, materials to to actually put the um, put them together, and we use the normal building techniques. So hopefully, uh, this should give you some idea of of what you're allowed to do. So you can do it that way, and it's probably the easiest and most affordable way to actually get a decent sized solar. Now I have a uh, a structure which is five times building regulation specifications. Uh, with my solar panels in my garden. Um, it works. Um, it's not ideal, but it's the only place where I can really get solar actually installed. The only other place I could get it installed is on the front of the building, and unfortunately I have immediately outside my front garden a big load of trees, which of course would uh, uh, make them rather pointless. Um, or I'd have to overburden myself by spending a couple of thousand pound extra on additional solar panels just to make up the difference there. So at the moment I'm at the back which obviously is west facing so the sun actually does uh, about five o'clock at the moment because um, we're in summertime um, actually cuts off that solar back between half four and five um, so I lose my solar because of shading although if it gets cloudy in the afternoon I get a bit of reflection back so I don't make that much power from it um, I have almost flat solar panels so what you'd have to do is you need to think about the solar. So what I've done is on our blog post um, and on the start of this video, there's some images there which will show you the um, panel alignments and the, um, the lean-to type building. Now this was taken from a metal frame, but unfortunately these metal frame buildings are... Um, Economy, e economically built, shall I say, and, and they don't hold, they wouldn't actually hold the weight. So it's a very good example, though, of um, your post coming down, cross joists here, there, and then your solar panels. Now, your solar panels do vary, so there is some sizes on the blog of average solar panels. Now, the problem there goes into what type of solar panels you're actually going to have. Um, to meet with whatever inverter you have. So I believe, please don't quote me on that, that's our solar for today. So we've got this, um, what's that, 10 panel. So that's a 10 panel, that's going to give you 3,139 watts of power. And so you would have this going across the building, and it's 4.96 metres. Now that's an average for most houses are about that rough size. Um, and then it comes out away from the wall 3.36 metres, which actually makes quite a nice covered area uh, on the back of your house. But underneath the permitted developments, under a separate section, you can't be more than 50% of your garden space. And that includes any other sheds and buildings that you've added to it since about the 1970s. So this is obviously your big system for your something like your 3.6 or 3 kilowatt um, inverters. The next one I've done is two panels arrangement. So that's a four panel and a six panel. Now these are quite good because that's a 1.8 so that's about your two 2.5 kilowatts and over here is about your 1.5 to 1 kilowatt even down to the 700 watt range so that would be your 700 watt 
um, panel installation. Now this is using the smaller panels. Um, obviously with the bigger panels the size obviously changes. So this is all down on there. Um, so if you've got any queries, I did a price on these and including solar panels I think comes in at around about 1,300 1, something like that I haven't looked at it it's been a while now I had to do this instead so yeah so that should give you an idea of the price so it's about one and a half thousand pounds including solar panels um, at 150 pounds so that's about average although I've just looked recently and wholesale prices have shot up for solar panels I can't think why so yeah, so you hopefully you get the idea on here of what the law is in relation to having solar panels fitted. That ideally you'd want them on a roof, um, out of the way, uh, rather than freestanding. If you have freestanding, which is like a tracking array, um, then you have to be five meters from your boundary. Um, so at five meters in from your garden, it's quite difficult to do. So you know you're going to get problems, and you don't want to be over four meters in height. And to be honest, you don't really want something like that in your garden. Um, you know, it takes a person's just a reasonable um, and, and respectful view of solar installations that you have in your house to your neighbours who may not like it, or you know, who wants a big bloody four meter solar array in someone's garden when you're looking out your windows day in and day out so obviously they're not really practical most people don't really um, don't really mind at all having uh, solar panels on shed roofs um, as long as it's done nicely um, and the pergola kind of offers you covering and you can get semi some transparent um, solar panels now um, they're more expensive but it will give you that bit of shade in your garden over the summer and a bit of coverage um, they're not entirely what we'd class as waterproof so what we did is when we did the pricing um, we put um, what we would normally put on as a, a base roofing so instead of having your tiles on the roof you have solar panels um, and underneath is basically the same as what a normal roof structure would be like the structure is obviously a bit more chunkier than garden sheds um, and would it's been designed just specifically to make sure it takes uh, the loads and uplift loads. Um, you can use them as sheds, they can be converted across obviously to sheds. Um, that would be extra obviously, uh, but you can discuss that at any time. So I hope this helps you understand uh, what's going on. I'll try and put a link in the video uh, description below uh, to the blog so you can read it and get hold of the pictures and things like that. Um, our next video is going to be something about uh, the setup because a lot of people have done DIY setup videos of how to connect solar and it's, it's actually illegal and you could face criminal charges. So uh, be very careful of what you see online. Uh, if you like this, subscribe to our off grid and solar or solar and off grid uh, playlist and you should get updates on our, what we uh, recommend um, and they can be from various people, not just me. Thank you for watching.